Kanban is one of the most widely used tools in Agile project management today. In this lesson, we will explore what Kanban is and how you can get started using Kanban tools in your projects. Kanban is Japanese for visual sign or card. It is a visual framework used to implement Agile and shows what to produce, when to produce it, and how much to produce. It encourages small, incremental changes to your current system and does not require a certain setup or procedure, meaning you could overlay Kanban on top of other existing workflows. Kanban was inspired by the Toyota production system and lean manufacturing. In the 1940s, Toyota improved its engineering process by modeling it after how supermarkets stock shelves. Engineer Taichi Ono noticed that supermarkets stock just enough product to meet demand. Inventory would only be restocked when there was empty space on the shelf, a visual cue. These same ideas apply to software teams and IT projects today. In this context, development work in progress takes the place of inventory, and new work can only be added when there is an empty space on the team's visual Kanban board. Kanban matches the amount of WIP to the team's capacity, improving flexibility, transparency, and output. A Kanban board is a tool to implement the Kanban method for projects. Traditionally, this tool has been a physical board with magnets, plastic chips, or sticky notes on a whiteboard. However, in recent years, more and more project management software tools have created online Kanban boards. A Kanban board, whether it is physical or online, is made up of different swim lanes or columns. The simplest boards have three columns, to do, in progress, and done. Other projects may consist of backlog, ready, coding, testing, approval, and done columns. Kanban cards, like sticky notes, represent the work, and each card is placed on the board in the lane that represents the status of that work. These cards communicate status at a glance. You could also use different color cards to represent different details. For example, green cards could represent a feature, and orange cards could represent a task. There are four main principles of Kanban. The first principle is visualization of work. Kanban is visual. That's its strength. The visual cues of Kanban help team members communicate quickly and efficiently about every aspect of a project. The second principle is work in progress limits. When there are too many tasks in progress at once, nothing seems to reach the finish line. Work in progress limits help maintain the flow of work so that more is accomplished in less time. The third principle is maintaining flow. Ideally, work should flow from to do, to doing, to done, in an even and efficient manner. The constant monitoring of this flow to both prevent and fix bottleneck situations where work can get stuck is what maintains proper flow. The visual nature of Kanban helps zero in on where bottleneck issues are occurring and why. And the final principle is continuous improvement. Kanban carries alongside it a natural and welcome side effect, continuous improvement. The more a team utilizes Kanban to streamline their efforts, the more they continue to improve at meeting project deadlines and goals. In this way, Kanban is all about evolving to the next level of efficiency and productivity. Introducing Kanban to your existing project management style and technique is a painless and seamless process. Kanban is not a system of disruption. Rather, it takes what is already there and improves upon it incrementally and over time to create the most efficient and effective approach to any given process or project. It is fundamentally about evolution, not revolution. Let's look at the steps involved in this. Step 1 requires that you visualize and map the current workflow. This step is vital to success, so do not skimp. If you don't have an accurate visual representation of your current workflow, you won't know what to improve upon or how. So, be honest and don't try to redesign your process at this stage of the game. You can't really see things clearly until it's all mapped out. Then, and only then, should you decide what you can improve upon. In the beginning, it will be a process of trial and error until your team finds its sweet spot. In step two, you should monitor the flow. Once the work is on the board, properly categorized, it's time to move it. Ideally, the work should move evenly and efficiently from to do to done. Unfortunately, real life never quite fully lives up to an ideal, and much experimentation is needed to find a baseline of optimal workflow. 
And, of course, things always come up, so this step is constantly being worked on in the Kanban system. As you monitor the board, ask yourself, how does the work flow? And where does it get stuck? Take note of what works and what doesn't, so you can improve upon the good flow and problem solve the bottlenecks. A great way to begin observing the flow of work is with routine meetings on a daily and weekly basis. The daily meetings should address the immediate concerns and accomplishments. This allows your team to tweak the flow in real time and optimize productivity. The weekly meetings should be more retrospective, a look back at the week and how the flow worked or didn't and the possible reasons why. This type of meeting helps better shape the coming week ahead, ideally creating a more optimized workflow than the previous ones. That is how Kanban is set up to help a team improve and evolve incrementally over time. The next step is to limit work in progress. Limiting work in progress is fundamental to Kanban. Setting WIEP limits helps move work through to finish more efficiently and effectively. Tasks are prioritized and work in progress is limited, so more reaches the finish line. In prior models of project management, the central idea was to maximize the output and workload of every member of the team. But this kind of project management leads to bottlenecks and bad flow, because too many tasks end up in the doing mode and never finishing. Limiting work in progress means that sometimes team members have a relatively light current workload, freeing them up to support other members to finish their priority tasks. Then, it's their turn to receive the help of their team members when their specific tasks are deemed the priority. This approach is radically different, but ultimately more efficient and streamlined. Plus, it helps foster a more cohesive team that feels in it together because they really are. Kanban is a system of continuous improvement and evolution towards greater efficiency and output. However, the only way to achieve this continuous improvement is to constantly measure how it is going and adjust accordingly. As a basic guide, try to track these four things. Total work in progress. Blockers. Throughput and lead time. Let's look briefly at each of these. Total work in progress is all the tasks currently on your Kanban board, anything started but not finished. A good rule of thumb is to divide the total WIP by the number of members on your team to arrive at the average. Ask yourself, does that seem like too much? A blocked item is one that is unable to move to the next stage in the process due to an extenuating issue. It's like a bottleneck situation in that it creates a delay. But while a bottleneck is due to too much WIP, a blocker is more about the specific task and the issue holding it up. Ask yourself, how often do blockers occur and how long do they stay blocked? Where in the process do they happen and why? Throughput is the number of items completed per time period. At the end of every established time period, often a week, record how many items moved to done without moving back. Track this number each period to assess how changes to your Kanban system affects how much work actually gets done. Lead time is how long a card takes to travel across the board, i.e. how long a task takes to move from doing to done. On each card, record the start date and end date. Assess the average time to understand how efficient and streamlined your team is at completing tasks so you can adjust accordingly. Kanban's visual nature offers a unique advantage when implementing Agile, including The Kanban board is easy to learn and understand, it improves flow of work, and minimizes cycle time. It also increases flexibility, Kanban is an evolving, fluid model. There are no set phase durations, and priorities are re-evaluated with new information. It also reduces waste, Kanban revolves around reducing waste, ensuring that teams don't spend time doing work that isn't needed, or doing the wrong kind of work. The Kanban board is also easy to understand. The visual nature of Kanban helps to make it intuitive and easy to learn. It also improves delivery flow. Kanban focuses on the just-in-time delivery of value and delivering work to customers on a regular cadence. In addition, it minimizes cycle time. Cycle time is the amount of time it takes for work to move through the team's workflow. In Kanban projects, the entire team helps to ensure the work is moving quickly and successfully through the process. Project teams are offered a staggering number of project and task management tools. Of them all, Kanban has proven to be one of the simplest, most efficient, and most customizable tools available. 
A Kanban board is an agile project management tool designed to help visualize work, limit work in progress, and maximize efficiency or flow. It can help both agile and DevOps teams establish order in their daily work. Kanban boards use cards, columns, and continuous improvement to help technology and service teams commit to the right amount of work and get it done. Want to learn more about this subject? Then click on our website to view the full course. Why not subscribe and get access to free articles and special offers? Join the global career highway now.